you'll never get the best of me. Shut up when I speak. You're all talk, but the walk is cheap. So get up, get up, and get out. Trying to face the reality. I'm the monster from your dreams. You don't want to see the side of me. So get up, get up, and get out. Ladies and gentlemen, we are rocking for a huge night of action here tonight on Raw. And as part of that action, Zelina Vega has a new associate. Angel Garza will make his Raw debut tonight against Apollo Crews. Former Intercontinental Champion Seth Rollins will take on another member of the OC, the second half of the Raw Tag Team Champions, Luke Gallows. And the freak, Lars Sullivan looks for some revenge on the WWE Champion Shinsuke Nakamura when these two clash again in an untitled main event. Thank you for joining us, a sold out crowd here in Richmond, Virginia. And before we get started with any action, it appears we are being joined by the phenomenal number one contender, AJ Styles. And Styles, of course, is the number one contender for the WWE Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura. And he will challenge for that championship at our next Raw Brand pay-per-view, Vengeance. Make sure you have that notification bell turned on and you are subscribed to the channel so you stay up to date with all episodes of this season of Universe. And most importantly, you stay up to date for when Vengeance becomes available. And of course, AJ Styles became the number one contender when last week he defeated Otis uh, in questionable circumstances. Otis had gathered up steam, came charging towards the corner, and AJ pulled the official in the way. That left an opening for interference, and the OC took it. Carl Anderson delivering the steel chair to Styles, who used that chair, and that enabled AJ to pick up the victory and become the number one contender for the WWE Championship. Questionable, that's for sure. Well, it seemed to me Otis had a pretty good chance of winning until that interference took place.
Whoa! Big Tucky wants to fight. And what AJ Styles, very confident, says, let's go. Is this going to happen? Crowd on their feet. Here in Richmond, they want to see it too. And it looks like this is going to happen. We've got an official out here and here we go. Well, an impromptu match set up from last week's events when Otis was undeservingly cost the number one contendership for the WWE Championship. Tucker has taken exception to the comments of AJ Styles and Tucker is out here tonight to fight for his friend. As Tucker picks up Styles and drops AJ, AJ crashes down to the mat. Tucker certainly has the power advantage. Otis had the same last week. Somehow Styles found a way, whether you like it or not, he is officially the number one contender and will challenge Shinsuke Nakamura at vengeance. A second crack for Styles. He came up short at Backlash. And we heard from Tucker that Otis was so upset about last week that he's not here tonight. I hope somewhere he's consoling himself with a big old turkey. Hmm. Styles slow to pick himself up and what better way to put a smile on Otis and his big face than by having Tucker score a victory against Styles. Big man, big personality, and Tucker knows that, and that's why he's out here tonight to fight for his friend, and Styles turns the table. Of course, AJ has plenty of friends of his own with the OC, Finn Balor, the Intercontinental Champion, and of course, the Raw Tag Team Champions, Gallows and Anderson. Gallows will be in action later tonight against Seth Rollins. And Tucker launches Styles, and Styles not at all Getting to grips with Tucker at the moment. It is all one half of heavy machinery, but Styles now beginning to mount a comeback. Comes forward with kicks and chops. Not enough to take Tucker off his feet. Head first into the corner. Goes Tucker. Another chop. Oh, and that just lit up. Tucker, who now delivers a shot of his own, but Styles quick to put the brakes on. Turns Tucker around. Oh, and then crushes the knee. And in doing so, Tucker face first into that second turnbuckle. Double the damage. And Styles makes the breakthrough. Was this wise from AJ Styles to take this match up on? He didn't need to. But I feel like at the moment, the ego of the leader of the OC is growing by the minute. Very confident, in fact more confident than he was going into his match with the WWE Champion at Backlash. And that's why I feel like he's taken this match on without any sort of caution. And that gives Tucker a chance. One. Oh, a one count after that diving shoulder tackle. Can you imagine having Tucker hit you with that shoulder? It's like being hit with a steam train. Plenty of action for you fans here tonight. As Tucker takes up and down AJ Styles. Tucker moving to the second rope, official. Just reminding Tucker. But it didn't stop him and a second diving shoulder tackle goes for the pin. One, two. Oh, gets a two count this time and Styles is reeling. Styles has got to look for a way to escape the offense of Tucker. Here comes Tucker and he dumps AJ all the way over the top rope to the outside. And guess what? Tucker's coming straight after him. Styles not been given any respite. That's smart from Tucker. Look at AJ crawling around. Not often we see Styles in that sort of condition but Tucker has been relentless he is focused and he feels aggrieved 
at how his friend was treated last week. And in my opinion, it was very close to Otis becoming the number one contender, dare I say it, for the WWE Championship. I felt like that dream scenario that Tucker and Otis wanted was about to come true until Styles pulled the official in the way and it left an opportunity for Carl Anderson to get involved and we all know Pele kick from Styles only puts Tucker down momentarily but we all know how the numbers game always seems to work in favour of the OC but for Tucker riding these shots from AJ Styles almost deflecting them and bouncing back and coming back with a shot of his own and another one and Styles is out on his feet but quickly recovers does AJ and a pin trying to steal the victory here oh two well AJ getting a bit desperate hasn't managed to break down Tucker quite yet sends him off the ropes Styles nails that drop kick beautifully executed and Styles like that as well no waste time AJ first major offense that has put Tucker down and kept him down but not for long Tucker comes back thunderous clothesline and could he score an upset no Well, that would certainly dent the ego of AJ Styles if Tucker was to get a victory. And AJ, oh, turned him inside out and drove that knee into the gut. And Styles hits the ropes and follows up with a knee right between the eyes of Tucker. We must all remember to keep an eye out for the OC because... Otis isn't here tonight and last week we saw when things got desperate the club the original club came together to make sure that AJ got the job done and at the moment they hold the majority of the gold the Intercontinental Championship with Finn Balor the Raw Tag Team Championship with Gallows and Anderson they defeated the Street Profits on an episode of Dark one championship that's missing is that WWE championship that sits around the waist the King of Strong Style Shinsuke Nakamura oh and snapping the knee and this is a smart move from AJ tackling those tree trunk legs of Tucker and taking away that standing base crowd here in Richmond. And then AJ No, they're behind Tucker. Oh my good God almighty. I think AJ has just got up, but I don't think he knows where he is. AJ might be out on his feet. Styles got waffled with that shot from Tucker Knight. And now Tucker, big Tucky. He's going to go big. Heading up. To the top rope in our opening contest. Superplex. Up and down goes Styles. And Tucker picks up AJ. I thought he should have gone for the pin. But Tucker decided otherwise. And now Tucker hits the ropes. Oh, the elbow. Now the pin. One, two, oh, and Styles gets the shoulder up. It was close. Tucker giving it his all. Representing heavy machinery. His friend, Big Otis. Big Dozer. He'll be watching. Tucker comes forward. Oh, AJ, snap the neck. Styles wants Tucker up. Did Tucker take too long? Oh, shot from AJ. Might be looking for another one. A phenomenal one. Forearm. Got him. 
One, two, three, and AJ Styles defeats Tucker. Tucker came out here. His heart was in the right place, but AJ Styles gets the job done. And here you see how the matchup unfolded. It was desperate measures at the beginning of this match. Tucker was all over AJ. But gradually, as the match progressed, Styles got more and more into the contest. Tucker was a heavy hitter on the night, but then this, the heaviest hit of them all, the phenomenal forearm, and that would give AJ Styles the victory, and Styles continues with his winning ways on the road towards vengeance. A collision course, Styles versus Nakamura, it happens again, at Vengeance. Ladies and gentlemen, as I've mentioned, our next Raw Brand pay-per-view is Vengeance. And next week is our go-home show. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel with the notification bell turned on so you stay up to date when Vengeance becomes available. Well, what's going on here? Who's just arrived here in Richmond, Virginia? Nice shoes. Well, I don't know who that was, but let me know who you think in the chat and in the comment section. But we now turn our attention to our second matchup after that impromptu match between Tucker and AJ Styles. It is now Apollo Crews who's been pulling off some pretty big matchups but sometimes coming up short, and he goes up against the man making his in-ring debut, the newest associate of Zelina Vega, Angel Garza, and I've got to admit, I have been salivating, yes indeed, salivating at the thought of seeing Angel Garza, the newest recruit of the red brand, courtesy of Eric Bischoff, in action here tonight. General Manager Eric Bischoff made sure this one got over the finish line and Angel Garza is a part of Raw and he's accompanied to the ring by his business associate Zelina Vega. And let's not forget that Zelina Vega also represents Andrade. So building a pretty nice little stable is Selena Vega, one to watch, that's for sure. And that has been what's been said of Angel Garza for quite some time. And now he gets his moment to shine here this evening on Raw. Eric Bischoff also has high hopes for this young man. And he gets his first taste of action against Apollo Crews, who look, let's be honest, is no pushover. Apollo Crews is out here tonight to upset the debut of Angel Garza. And don't forget, if you want to check out more action in this season of Universe, why not check out Dark? Extra matches from both Raw and SmackDown. And also some great up-and-coming content creators putting their commentary on some of our matches. But right now, we focus on the matchup at hand. The in-ring debut of Angel Garza. All eyes on Garza and Cruz out to cause an upset. Garza takes up and down Cruz. Nice start from the debutante. And Apollo trying to get to his feet, but oh! Well Garza stopped him there. That was smart. Made sure that Apollo Crews couldn't get back to his feet. Driven face first into the mat to keep control. And now Apollo in the corner. And Garza chops him down. A very aggressive start from Garza. And Zelina Vega enjoying what she's seeing. Takes up Crews. Oh, Crews with the knee. Stops Garza. Don't forget that. Apollo Crews lost two weeks ago to Andrade, the other associate of Selena Vega, so it would be a nice way for Apollo Crews to really stick it 
to Zelina Vega. And Apollo heading up to that second rope. Garza, a little bit dazed, gets back up and Cruz with a massive drop kick. And the impact sends Garza crashing down to the mat. A pin from Apollo Cruz. And Garza kicks out. And Garza bounced up to his feet, but bounced straight into an elbow from Apollo Cruz. Picks up Garza. Garza floats over the back. Oh, nice chop from Garza. Stuns momentarily Apollo Cruz and Cruz back in the other corner now. Boot to the midsection. Garza heads up quickly on the move. Sunset flip. Holds on for the pin. And a one count for Garza. Beautiful standing moonsault from Garza. Applauded by Zelina Vega and rightly so. That was nicely done. Garza is a talent, that's for sure. Takes up. Oh, wow. Not sure what you call that. It looked pretty and it did the damage. Causing a two count for Garza. And Cruz left his feet and was stunned by that. Hurricane Rana followed up. And again, Zelina Vega liking what she sees. Is she going to make it two for two? against Cruz. Drags Apollo Cruz, does Garza. And then a bit of a taster of what he's capable of. Hits the ropes, drop kick to the back. We've seen that aggression. We've also seen that ability. And very much a different kind of moveset, which can take a superstar by surprise. But Apollo is certainly not out of this. Apollo using his power into a Samoan drop. Nicely done from Cruz. And Cruz featured in this past week's episode of Dark. A cracking contest against Mojo Rawley. And if you have not checked that out and heard the commentary from Third Strike Entertainment, a great creator, go and check it out. It's on my channel right now. Garza forcing back Cruz. Comes in. Oh, and a hurricane runner again. And Garza makes it look effortless. How he moves and transitions to hit that hurricane runner. But Cruz oh, dumps Garza on the back of his neck. And Garza bails out for the first time. Feeding the pressure here on the big stage here on Raw. And Garza, oh! Got caught by Apollo Cruz. Garza was trying to take a moment. He had a moment with his business associate, then walked around the ring and Cruz cut him off. And Cruz now takes to the sky once again. Crossbody, one, two, and we almost had an upset. Apollo Cruz taking Garza by surprise and that's the right thing to do and Garza is certainly not getting it all his own way in his in-ring debut here on Raw but floats through again is Garza going to steal this victory is he going to take the victory from Cruz oh. well it wouldn't have been that impressive if he had to steal the victory away from Apollo Crews like that, he nearly did, but Crews still in the match. And I'm sure that Selena Vega will be hoping for more from Garza than, say, a sunset flip or a roll-through victory. This is his chance to make a statement, to make it clear of his intentions here on Raw. And Apollo Crews back up, looking to spoil the party. Comes forward and walks straight into the kick. Right on the jaw. Oh my. Garza taken up. And a Death Valley driver. And it's all going wrong for Garza. And Zelina Vega might be seeing a meal ticket slip away here. 
Cruz perched on the top rope. She's going to slap me for that comment. I know that. But oh, Gaza. Gaza sidestepped Cruz. That was smart. Gaza had his wits about him. Heads up to the top. Oh, my. Spanish fly from Gaza. And now what's he looking for? Gaza wants Cruz up. Oh, I think. Is this? Wait. Oh, the knees into the chest. And he calls that the wing clipper. And Apollo Cruz. Well, his wings have officially been clipped, all right. And Angel Gaza picks up his victory, his first victory here on Raw. The wing clipper, but the Spanish fly was so fluent. At times he had Selena Vega biting her nails, but Angel Gaza brought the entertainment on his in-ring debut. Props to Apollo Crews, he gave it his best shot. But Gaza is victorious in his debut here on Raw. Still to come tonight, our main event. No championship on the line, but a chance for Lars Sullivan to get some revenge when he takes on the WWE Champion, Shinsuke Nakamura. And some questions for you all. Make sure you leave your answers in the comments section. Will AJ Styles defeat Shinsuke Nakamura at Vengeance? Can Angel Gaza make an impact on Raw? And do Heavy Machinery deserve a shot at the Raw Tag Team Championship? Let me know. I look forward to reading your comments. Welcome back to Monday Night Raw. It's been a busy night full of action already. And now we look to... Burn it down with the architect, Seth Rollins. And Rollins, of course, looking for a way to get back and face Finn Balor for that Intercontinental Championship. Every time he's faced Balor, he has come up short. But two weeks ago, he faced one half of the Tag Team Champions here on Raw, members of the OC. He took on Carl Anderson and scored the victory. And now tonight, he looks to take on the other half of the Tag Team Champions in Luke Gallows, hoping to build that momentum and force his way to get a shot at the Intercontinental Champion once again. Can Rollins do it? Can he knock off the biggest member of the OC? I'm sure for Luke Gallows, he'll be thinking about the well-being of his friend and OC member, Finn Balor, to try and stifle any sort of momentum that Seth Rollins is looking to gain. Carl Anderson couldn't do it, but can Luke Gallows? We're just moments away from finding out our third contest here this evening Seth Rollins takes on another member of the OC, Luke Gallows. And Seth Rollins looks fired up. And he will have to burn down the OC, it seems, if he's ever to get another crack at Finn Balor. Balor has gone from strength to strength and now surrounded himself with the OC. And of course, Luke Gallows, one half of the tag team champions, they won those tag team titles against the Street Profits in an episode of Dark. And it could, at the end of Vengeance, be that the OC carry all gold and all silverware here on Raw. The only championship that is missing from their possession is the WWE Championship. And AJ Styles takes on Nakamura for that very championship in two weeks time listen to the boos from the fans here in richmond virginia they are not fans of the original club and they are firmly in the corner of the architect seth rollins here we go our third matchup of the evening underway and rollins quickly with the kick to the gut and gallows 
stops Rollins. Oh, huge kick. Rollins could be out. Well, Seth Rollins came out quick, but Gallows stopped him. And Gallows. Oh, the biggest man of the OC. I said that. And Gallows proving to be just that. Out muscling Seth Rollins in the opening stages of this contest. And Seth Rollins must not let his emotions get the better of him. Because Gallows will put you away if you get complacent. And I'm not saying that the Street Profits got complacent. But the Street Profits were feeling very confident. And they came unstuck against Gallows and Anderson of the club. And that is why the Tag Team Championship of Monday Night Raw now sits with the OC. Gallows out here to do the dirty work, just like Carl Anderson. Both have been instrumental in aiding Finn Balor and AJ Styles. We saw that last week with Styles and Otis. It was Carl Anderson. Every single member of the OC, very important. They have their roles and they stick to them. And it makes it very difficult for anybody that tries to get in the mix or wants to try and force their way in to get a crack at a championship because they're like a pack of wolves, these lot. They will pick you off and they will stack each other up to get in your way so you can't get to who you want to get to. Oh, but Gallows came running forward and Rollins stopped him. And Seth Rollins, well, Rollins will fight and he will fight and he will fight. He was a fighting intercontinental champion and that fight certainly hasn't left him knee to the face of Luke Gallows. Now head first into the corner goes Gallows. Rollins beginning to unload and turns Gallows and oh, face first into that second turnbuckle. And after a start where Rollins came out quick, Gallows put him in his place. Rollins now back in the contest, but as I say, that curse of the commentator, Gallows puts Rollins down. And now elbow after elbow. That's gonna hurt. Now picks up. Rollins and drives him down, belly to belly, suplex, pin, forcing the pin, you see the hand on the chin just trying to add more weight to hold down Seth Rollins, but Rollins kicks out at two. Crowd definitely getting their money's worth, four matches here this evening, we've seen AJ Styles take on Tucker in an impromptu match. And we saw the debut of Angel Garza if you're just joining us. I won't tell you the result of that one. Go and check it out for yourself. And now, we're seeing Luke Gallows, who again drives the elbow right into the heart of Seth Rollins. And still to come tonight, the Freak looks to get some revenge on the WWE Champion in our non-title main event, Lars Sullivan versus Shinsuke Nakamura. Oh! That shot almost crumpled Seth Rollins, but Rollins, I don't know how he's standing after that. Many men would have hit the deck, but not Seth Rollins. Rollins will continue to come forward, now driving the knee into the face of Luke Gallows. And Rollins hits up Gallows. Look at the size difference of these two, but Rollins is fearless and he drives Gallows face first. And now the pin after that DDT. And a two count. And don't forget, if you want to get early access to episodes of Raw, SmackDown and NXT, the NXT Championship Tournament continues. 
and make sure you go and check out our Patreon. And as well, we're now offering creator support. So if you are an up and coming content creator and you want some help with templates and things that might be able to help you with your universe mode, we're now adding that offering to our Patreon powerhouse tier. So if you want to go and check that out, you can do so. Patreon.com forward slash Delzinski and check out the offerings that are available. Oh, but Gallows came forward and Rollins sent him over the top rope. Seth Rollins. Oh, Topay Suicida. Nicely done from Seth Rollins and the referee starts to count up to three. Head first goes Gallows. And the crowd here in Richmond getting a great look at the action right before their eyes. Gallows, oh my, choke slam on the concrete. Well, Rollins took the action to the outside and then paid for it. This could be all. No, Seth Rollins just just got the shoulder up it was close not just a choke slam but down on that unforgiving concrete that protective padding it protects nothing but Rollins somehow is back on his feet but for how long Gallows looking to put Rollins down Rollins looking to fight back both of these men now just knocking lumps out of each other. Is Rollins going to be able to get back in this matchup? No! Gallows! Oh! That's it! One! Two! Three! No! Oh my! I apologise. I counted the three. Our official did not. A two. A late two. Rollins kicked out of the gallows pole. And now Luke Gallows might be asking himself some questions. He's hit Seth Rollins with his big moves. And Seth Rollins, I don't know how, has found a way to kick out. And now Gallows, well this uncharacteristic of Gallows. I thought he was going to go up. He wasn't in the end. Looked like he was going for some sort of powerbomb instead. Rollins with the spring and the knee. And Seth Rollins might just have knocked Luke Gallows out. Heads to the top. Frog splash. Got him. One, two, three. And Rollins is the victor. Wow. What a way to come back. Rollins with a flurry of offence, went through the gears and picks up the win. Here you see how the matchup unfolded. The gallows pole, it wasn't enough. And Seth Rollins with that frog splash after that springboard knee. And Rollins keeps that momentum going. And he keeps on moving forward to put the pressure on Finn Balor. And oh, Rollins wants a mic. Rollins has something to say.
Finn Balor playing hardball with Seth Rollins. Huge ultimatum made by the Intercontinental Champion. Oh, it's on. At vengeance, it will be the Intercontinental Champion Finn Balor defending his championship against the former champion, the architect, Seth Rollins. sure about that one. Eric Bischoff enlisting Drake Maverick as the man that's going to restore order and keep things in check here on Monday nights whilst Eric Bischoff is away. Um, okay, I'll believe it when I see it, but if that's Eric Bischoff's choice, then that's his choice. Drake Maverick, he's going to be around here a lot more on Monday nights and he will have to control superstars such as this guy or this freak Lars Sullivan I would like to see that but tonight Sullivan could care less about Drake Maverick he's got his focus set on Shinsuke Nakamura of course Lars Sullivan had an opportunity for the WWE Championship after he won the gauntlet match. He challenged Nakamura and he came up short. He manhandled Shinsuke Nakamura at times, but he was unable to take that undefeated record away and the WWE Championship from the King of Strong Style. The Freak's record has been dented over the past month a loss to Otis, of course the loss to Nakamura, a WWE Championship match which wasn't successful. It hasn't been going too well for the Freak, but what a way to bounce back if he can indeed get that revenge over Nakamura here tonight. That will send him shooting up the rankings here on Raw. For Shinsuke Nakamura, he must be very careful not to overlook the freak in his preparation for his match at Vengeance where he meets AJ Styles for the second time he knows exactly what Lars Sullivan is capable of and the first time like I said when these two met Sullivan was dominant in parts but it wasn't enough to take that undefeated record away nor the WWE Championship from Shinsuke Nakamura. Can he put that dent in the record of Nakamura tonight? Or will Nakamura march on towards vengeance and AJ Styles? It is your main event. It's a freakish one once again. Sullivan, Nakamura. Here we go. And the referee signals for the bell. 
And a stare down. And Nakamura. Oh, O'Sullivan caught the boot. Spins Nakamura around. Grabs Nakamura. And it's almost like we start where we left off when these two last met. Sullivan taking back control. It took two Kinshasa's. One was from the second rope. Nakamura didn't get all of it, but then delivered a second, and that was enough to put away the freak. Well, that wouldn't tell you the whole story because for the majority of the match it was Sullivan and at times I honestly thought that it was going to be Sullivan who would be crowned the new WWE Champion. He has to be, in my opinion, the closest superstar to taking away that undefeated record from Shinsuke Nakamura. He was that dominant on the night. That's what I took away from it. If you've been living in a box and you don't know about the wins and the losses, Nakamura has not received a single blemish on his record here on Raw. Undefeated, he retains that zero in his lost column. He wins and he wins and he wins. And Sullivan is aware of that. And so is the challenger that awaits him at vengeance. Both men have tasted defeat at the hands of Shinsuke Nakamura. Can you imagine if Sullivan was to knock off Nakamura here tonight, the WWE Champion? That could put doubt in the mind of Nakamura and things could be good, begin to crumble. And then that leaves AJ Styles with a golden opportunity to capitalize, much like the OC always does, and in Styles defeats Nakamura. It could be a real turning of the tide for Nakamura and a downward spiral if that was to happen. But we're a long way from that just yet. Knee to the face, me playing devil's advocate. And the action spills to the outside. And Nakamura drives the knee into Lars Sullivan. And that is one thing that Nakamura is not afraid to do. He's not afraid to exchange and mix it up with Lars Sullivan. Many have gone on the run, duck and dodge, to try and knock down the freak. But that is not the offense of the WWE Champion. And sometimes... It goes against him and Sullivan chopped that knee away. Nakamura gets to his feet. A huge few weeks for the WWE Champion. And Lars Sullivan unknowingly could be doing a favour to the OC. Could be gifting them that final championship that they crave so much. As he launches Nakamura out the corner. And he comes forward once again. No respite for Nakamura. But now Sullivan just dealing with his own mental issues. It seems the freak always on the edge. And that release, that scream, that anger from Lars Sullivan just gave Nakamura enough time to gain his bearings and get back in the match. And... That is one thing that Lars Sullivan has that works against him. His marbles, they're not always there. Shot from Nakamura. And now the strong star from Shinsuke. It knocks down Lars Sullivan. Not often you see that. Oh, and a nice kick. And it's almost like a basement version of the Kinshasa. Doesn't get full authority. A shining wizard, if you will just for those of you out there that will correct me in the comments section, I'm sure you will. Nakamura, now, dragging Lars Sullivan, and head first goes the freak. And our main event, busy night here. And 
vengeance, the card really beginning to shape up now. The match card will be released in the coming weeks. And if you are looking forward to vengeance, hit that like button as Nakamura goes airborne and crashes down into the canvas. Did you see how high Lars Sullivan elevated Shinsuke Nakamura? And the freak. Oh, I thought he was just going to throw Nakamura aside, but Nakamura! Oh, wow. Caught him with the second, faked him with the first, and nearly grabs the win. For those of you that are joining us, non-title match. Championship not on the line, but a huge opportunity for the Freak to get revenge. And oh, Lars Sullivan stops the champion in his tracks. Platters him with a shot. Takes up Nakamura. Oh, and just dumps him down. It's a long way up and then down. And the Freak is throwing you about. And now Nakamura being taken up. And what does the Freak have in mind here? Oh my! Lars Sullivan holds the back of his head. Can you imagine the impact for Nakamura? A pin from Lars Sullivan could have the champion. And oh, that was dangerously close. Shinsuke Nakamura... He just got that shoulder up and the freak scoops up the WWE Champion. What's he thinking here? Oh my goodness! Nakamura dumped all the way from the inside to the outside. Wait a minute. Is that... Is that... Matt Hardy? Is it? I'm not sure. Could it be him? For Sullivan, it is. Well, Matt Hardy was injured at the hands of the freak. And Hardy's out here and Sullivan, well, Sullivan has flipped his lid once again. Hardy confronting the man that put him out of action for many weeks. And, oh, here we go. Well, our official... Surely our match can't continue. Our twin officials trying to separate these two. More officials out here trying to tear these two apart. Chaos. Nakamura gets back in the ring. He's only just realising that Sullivan's gone. I, I don't believe the match is continuing any further. I mean, Sullivan's gone and... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. The opportunist of the OC... The number one contender. We've seen that elbow once. Nakamura turns around. We've seen it twice. You can feel the confidence of AJ Styles ahead of vengeance.